Welcome back to the channel. In this video, we will explore the organizational structure in SAP s hana Finance. I brought you one slide to explain you the theoretical background and the relationships between the financial objects. In case you want to skip this part, just look into the video description. I provided timestamps. Okay, so first of all, you can see here the so-called company code. The company code is the most important organizational object for our financial module in SAP. So without a company code, we cannot use finance. This company code is linked to a so-called company. Such a company is like a company code from the consolidation perspective. So it's used for reporting purposes of our financial group. However, a single company code can only be assigned to exactly one company and not to multiple. This wouldn't also make any sense. Next off, we have the so-called credit control area. This financial object is used to control the credit limit of our customers. Meaning that, for instance, if our customer already purchased goods or services for a total value of, let's say, 1 million, then we could restrict this customer to not buy any more products before all the bills for the delivered products or services were paid. One of those credit control areas can be assigned to multiple company codes. However, a single company code can only be assigned to exactly one credit control area. Next off, we have the so-called profit centers. Those profit centers are used to track our profit from an internal perspective. However, in SAP s they are defined in the financial module, even though they are more relevant for the controlling module. And we can assign one company code to one or even multiple profit centers. Now we will leave the financial module a bit and see how the other modules integrate with finance. From the controlling perspective, we have the so-called controlling area. This is the central organizational object in controlling. So you would need at least one controlling area to use the controlling module. This controlling area can be linked to one or even multiple company codes. Or we could even say that each of the company codes should be assigned to an individual controlling area. The controlling area is also linked to the profit center. So whenever we create a profit center, we must state in which controlling area we want to create this profit center. Next off, we have the so-called purchasing organization. This purchasing organization is the central organizational unit in materials management and is used for our purchasing processes. We can assign one purchasing organization to one or even multiple company codes. However, a single company code can only be assigned to one purchasing organization and not multiple. We also have the option to not assign our company codes to purchasing organizations at all. Rather assign the purchasing organizations to another organizational object I will show you right now. The so-called plant. A plant represents a location where we produce our products, store them and from where we also ship our products to our customers. One or even multiple plants can be assigned to the same company code. However, Two company codes could not be assigned to the same plant. It also doesn't make any sense. So this relation over here between the purchasing organization plant and company code is as follows. As said, we could either assign the company code directly to a purchasing organization, or we could say we assign the plant to a purchasing organization. And since a plant is also linked to a company code, the company code will be indirectly linked to the purchasing organization. This is also possible. Next off, we have the so-called sales organization. This is the central organizational unit from our sales and distribution module and is used for all of our sales processes. So such a sales organization can be assigned to one or even multiple company codes. Those are the main organizational units related to our company code. There are more special organizational units I will explain you in other videos. However, there are three more organizational objects which I want to explain you briefly and which are not directly linked to one of those I explained to you over here. Those are the so-called business area, which was formerly used for segmental reporting based on business lines. So in the past, we could create balance and profit and loss statements based on business areas instead of based on company codes. However, I do not recommend you to use this business area anymore because in SAP, we should use the so-called segment. I will explain you this in a second. Next off, we have the so-called functional area. This functional area is used for organizations utilizing the so-called cost of sales accounting approach to define the profit and loss statement. I explained you this extensively in another video of mine. I will also leave you the link in the description of this one. And last but not least, as said before, we have the so-called segment. The segment is mandatory for certain accounting standards such as IFRS. So for instance, if we have a multinational company in the automotive industry, then one of the segments could be the automotive division of North America, another one the automotive division of South America and so on. The segment is normally derived from the profit center and this is also a best practice. However, it would also be possible to directly insert the segment during our financial postings. Okay, that's it. Now let's jump into the system to see all of this in action. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. So in our SAP S4HANA system, we navigate to the transaction called SPRO. 
hit on enter, click on Zap Reference IMG, and then you will find a node called Enterprise Structure. Click on this one, then click on Definition, Financial Accounting, and here we can define the main organizational objects in SAP Swahana Finance. We will start here with the company, click on this one. As you remember from the theoretical section, the company is used for consolidation purposes. So we can click here on new entries, then we give it a key, which can be up to six characters and alphanumeric. Let's say one, two, three, four, five, six. Provide a name, even a name too, and then some street information, as well as quite importantly, a currency. And then you would just save the entry. That's basically it. For now, I will cancel. Then we go back. Next off, we have the credit control area. As you recall, this credit control area is used to manage the credit limits for our customers. Let's click on new entries. We would need to provide an alphanumeric key, which is up to four characters, and the currency. And then we got here different sections. One is called data for updating sales and distribution. And this parameter called update over here will actually control when the values of our open sales orders, deliveries, and billing documents are updated. We can assign a fiscal year variant for each of our credit control areas. And then we can assign some default data. So whenever we create a new business partner with customer roles, and we then use the credit role for the customer, we can already assign some default values for the risk category, the credit limit, so let's say 1 million, and the so-called credit management representative group. Last but not least, you can see your organizational data where there is a button for all company codes, meaning that if we set this indicator, then we tell the system that this credit control area is permitted for posting in every company code we have defined. So far, so good. For now, we will click on cancel. Next off, we have here the business area. I have also explained you this object and we could add here a new entry, which is just an alphanumeric key and a description. However, as said, this is not recommended anymore. It's recommended to use the so-called segments. Click on cancel. Then we have the functional area. Also here we only need to provide an alphanumeric key and a name. And as I told you before, the functional area is used if we use the so-called cost of sales accounting approach to calculate our profit and loss statement. Let's go back. Then we have some rather special topics. I will skip them for now. And here we have the segment. And as said, the segment also consists of an alphanumeric key and a description and is used for our segment reporting. So we can post our financial transactions in one or even multiple company codes to the same segment. And then later on, we can create our balance and profit and loss statement according to these different segments. So for instance, according to segment 1000 underscore A. Last but not least, you can see here the fine profit center is actually also within the enterprise structure of financial accounting. If I click on this one, then we could double click here on create profit center and could create a new profit center always with regard to a controlling area. Let's go back so far for the definition. But as I told you, the different organizational objects related to finance are also related to each other. So let's actually go out of this view and click on assignment financial accounting. And here you can see we need to assign our company code to a company. So let's click on this one. Here you can see, for instance, our company code 1010 was assigned to the company 1010 for consolidation purposes. And this is actually best practice to make a one-to-one -one assignment. Okay, let's go back. Then we have the assignment of company code to credit control area. Here you can see multiple company codes can be assigned to the same credit control area. However, we could also create one credit control area per company code. Here you can also see can be overwritten. So if we set this indicator, we can manually overwrite the credit control area defaulted from the company code's global data. So meaning that upon posting, we could actually still overwrite the control area, even though it was assigned here. Let's go back. Then we have a step to assign business areas to consolidation business areas. We will leave it for now as business areas are not relevant anymore. Also, this here is a rather special topic. And then we have the option to assign our profit center to company code. Let's click on this one. Here you can see the profit center standard hierarchy. And if I just scroll down a bit, you can see here that for instance, the profit center YB101 was assigned to different company codes. I could also deselect it like that so that we can't utilize this profit center in the deselected company codes. Let's go back. Now out of the financial accounting, we also have other assignments related to our finance. So in controlling, as you can see here, we need to assign our company code to a controlling area. So here is our controlling area. And if I double click here on the sub node, you can see that all of the company codes were assigned to this controlling area. However, in theory, I also have the option to assign one controlling area to only one company code. Please be aware that we can only assign multiple company codes to the same controlling area if those company codes over here use the same chart of accounts and also the same fiscal year variant. It is not obligatory that those company codes here use the same currency as our controlling area has an own currency. 
as you can see over here. Let's go back and back again. Then we go to Logistic General and over here we must assign our plants. So you can see over here each of the company codes existing in the system was assigned to a deviating plant. However, it would also be possible to assign multiple plants to the same company code. Let's go back and then in Sales and Distribution we must at least assign our sales organization to a company code. Let's click on this one. Here you can see for each and every company code one sales organization was created. However, also here it would be possible that we create one sales organization and assign it to multiple company codes. Let's go back and out of this view. Last but not least you can see here in Materials Management we can either assign our purchasing organization to a company code or to a plant. This is exactly what I explained to you before in the theoretical part. Let's start with the former one. Here you can see for each of the company codes one purchasing organization was created. However, also here we could create one purchasing organization, so for instance 1010, and assign it to all of the company codes. Or we could even leave some entries out over here. So for instance, we could skip the part where we assign company code 1010 to purchasing organization 1010 and rather assign the company code to a plant. In this case, the company code will be indirectly linked to the purchasing organization. Because as you remember, this company code was linked to a plant. And now we could go back and here in this step, assign purchasing organization to plant. We could just say that we want to assign our plant 1010 to the purchasing organization 1010. And as this plant 1010 was also assigned to our company code 1010, all of the three are interrelated. Let's go back and out of this view. Last but not least, there is also a special topic called Human Resource Management. Click on this one. And here you can see assignment of personal area to company code. Let's select this one. Here we can assign the personal area to a company code. So the personal area is an organizational entity representing an area within an enterprise defined by specific aspects of personal administration as well as time management and payroll. And you can see we can have here one-to-one -one assignment between the company code and the personal area. Or we could also assign multiple company codes to one and the same personal area. Okay, this marks the end of the video. It took a lot of effort. So I would really appreciate if you subscribe to the channel and activate the bell. Also make sure to subscribe to my Patreon, where I post lots of informative documents and where we have a community chat. The link is in the bio of my channel. Thanks a lot and see you next time.